This is your Solana Daily Debrief. It's the 1st of August. Let's dive in. BTC, down, ETH, down, and Solana. Our precious Salami is down considerably. Remember, I got some buy orders set at 150. Not financial advice, of course. So onto the actual news. So Blunt's talking about BTC. Just for context, Blunt thinks that Sol's going to go down to $80 and that it's not going to have any pop. Whereas I believe there's a potential for $1,000 sold this cycle. Anyway, he says, I think BTC completed a nice clear wave, five wave rise from the 50 lows. That took 24 days and we're currently in two days into an ABC correcting that move. We will probs last another two weeks or so of downward chop before we put in a solid higher low around 60K. So what he's basically saying is he thinks it's going to go like this before we bounce up. Quite a few traders have that in mind, just for just as a FYI, I think by the time breakpoint comes, and I hope people can make it a breakpoint, I think then we should start to see a little bit more movement. Same Pump has a similar view, expecting a breakdown of the pattern by the end of September. So this kind of pattern, and then it says breakdown, but basically up is what he's thinking. If you come on down a little bit further in this tweet, and remember all tweets are below, you can have a look. So BTC up or down from here, look at this chart each time and ask yourself this question. So if we click on this just for one little part, you can see that we come along and then kaboom, kaboom, we go. Next bit of news is from Center Loomis, uh, has introduced a Bitcoin Act bill to establish a strategic Bitcoin reserve, just like she said she would at the Bitcoin conference. Just note with this, this is not like a law or anything. And I don't know the actual, how much work goes into making it an actual law. Um, it will not pass under the current government for sure. It takes a lot of time, has to go through lots of steps, and these will often fail. But with enough lobbying pressure, maybe they go through. Now back to Seoul and back to Blunts. Once again, he still thought this would not happen. So we're not taking this. I guess we're looking at this just to see a different viewpoint. And we're also looking at it so that we can eventually say, mate, you're way off. What was this? Either way, uh, he says it's not awe-inspiring for the broader market. So we we could see some downward movement, not to this eighty dollar mark or anything like that. That I that I think, but I'm definitely thinking we could drop back down to like one fifty. There's just no real kind of momentum in the markets at present. With his precious whiff that some people think will go to a hundred dollars, he also sees this coming down. So I'm probably just going to go and sell all my whiff at this point. And I understand this upside. So I'll go sell it here and I'll go put in a price bid at like $1.50. And I'm okay with that. If I miss out, I miss out. And what I'm saying here is certainly not financial advice. Just telling you what I'm doing. The Super Team ecosystem call, Solana ecosystem call is back today, Thursday, 4 p.m. These are always very good. Jump in and watch this one if you can. Otherwise, I should have some highlights for you tomorrow. And the Solana Breakpoint Conference. This is going to be done very differently this year. So if you can make it to Singapore, I've got a video out on it. Get amongst it. New format, no panels. Expect four formats, five minute, five slide product keynotes, debates with formal motions, uh, two main stages, left curve and right curve and for you. And I think this is going to be really cool. The great thing about this is the previous breakpoint and previous breakpoints. Firstly, the one in Lisbon. I'd love it to be in Lisbon because Lisbon's great. But the issue is they're in so many, they're in different areas, like completely different areas. You had to use vans. That didn't work. Then breakpoint in Amsterdam, kind of background information, but I wanted to watch different things, but there was so much of a conflict of schedule and you had to walk for like five minutes between each stage in this kind of campus. Here, this should work a lot better so we can catch all the alpha and it'd be great if we don't have to listen to anything for like 40 minutes. This video here is very funny. Uh, not your average crypto conference. I'll link it below. It's clever. Give it a watch. And now let's talk about dupe. So as you know, I mentioned it many, many times and still some viewers would not have claimed it. So I definitely want us to get better at just organizing our wallets. But there were 780 million tokens claimed by 639,000 eligible users. But there's still 220 million tokens that went back to the Jupiter Exchange. I went through all my wallets. There will be some old wallets that I probably would have missed. So I'm guilty of not being perfect with organization. But we have the next thing that we're going to be moving on to that we make sure we claim right now. So when it comes to just monitoring your wallets, make sure you've got a bit of a, a strategy. I've already talked about it in different videos. I can make a video that makes it very, very clear. So the next thing that we have to be very aware of is our active staking rewards. I hope you've just got like kind of maximum five wallets with dupe in them. So it's easier to manage. You just go into those private keys. Some will be a ledger, some may be a hot wallet, and you just go and claim those active staking rewards. I have over 50 because of just silliness. So that's my bad. But this will be ending August 6th. If you do not claim these active staking rewards, and remember the dupe is auto staked onto your staked dupe, the other ones just go into your wallet. If you do not claim it, then 
you lose it. it goes back to the DAO and it's used in whatever way they want to so make sure you do that meow has uh an essay here out on cat and uh community eden first and all that good stuff this is decent in length it'll be linked below worth a read but fortunately fabiano has gone and given us highlights so we'll speed run this Jupiter is going to be the exchange everything. So this is the value proposition, in my opinion, for Jupiter. It's just, it will be the, it's, it, everyone will know about Jupiter. Everyone will go to Jupiter. Everything will be routed through Jupiter. So that's like, that's the major value, in my opinion. There's so much more value than that, but that's, that's it. The next part is a dupe token, just being exceptionally in, um, honest and transparent with the dupe token and having that major integrity. So, you know, like, They'll generate revenue. They'll pay their um, advisors and USDC. If they want to buy dupe, they will buy dupe. They're not going to just go and spread dupe to influencers or anything like that. Or, or whatever. Like, they're not selling dupe to fund operations. These things are very important. And a good example would be the W token from Wormhole. I really appreciate that Wormhole's built something great. I would say, I've said it before, and I did manage to claim some W tokens, but their tokenomics model is just horrendous. Like pre-sale or pre, pre-release, pre sorry, $2 or over $2. You could get it on, sell it or buy it on Wales Market for that. And now it's 25 cents. And also, by the way, the claim period for claiming your airdrop has ended. I didn't realize. And then I just found some in the wallet yesterday and it had ended, unfortunately. Anyway, PPP versus PVP. This is brilliant because I didn't fully understand it. I initially thought in some ways like P PVP, I understand that, just kind of dump on people. And this is how things are going to be. PPP, I thought there's going to be an element of trying to work with other communities so that you just didn't sell your bags, which I thought that wouldn't work. But that's not really what PPP is. It's just about building trust, team devs, investor, community, and essentially just having, you know, locks on things so that you can't sell for certain people. The community can always sell, of course, unless they bought in with like some sort of vesting or cliff period. Then you've got the cat aspect, certainty for holders, alignment between stakeholders and transparency on token distribution. Few, like there's too many projects out there that have nothing like this. And I think, you know, people know that I'm direct and quite blunt. I'm just going to start calling it out and then we can work out how it's going to be. And also to try and get some sort of audit on the tokens we like, that would be brilliant. Otherwise, I just think this cycle, people are smarter. They're not going to rip the same as they did in the previous cycle unless there is something like that. Jupe passed. And now you can see this basically just going for the community eating first, DAO being big and just trust and so on and so on. TLDI, it feels surreal, but it seems we finally get got the product we all wish for. A dedicated founding team, great products and a strong community. Okay, next bit of news, Camino. So Camino has got a strategy to get to 10 billion TVL. I don't know what they're going to make at 10 billion TVL, but it'll be decent. And I have given plenty of feedback to the community, always do. They don't always like it, but they always listen. And I will continue to give more and more and more. So one thing is they are introducing governance and of course using maybe the dupe model to bring in more TVL. Remember, Jupiter just has the majority of all routing ever. And then they've got a few other things that they're releasing as well. So as an example down here, sorry, uh, V2 Lend, introducing modular lending to Solana. And this will be able to do like new cases like real world assets and order book lending. I don't know how this works. So I'm not going to pretend that I do. Either way, just more and more things will be built with that. Their idea here is if we um, we don't believe in if we build it, they will come. They're just going to be active. So content working groups, which I'm part of the Uplink working group. This is a lot of work. I'm not going to join theirs necessarily, but I may just give some advice. But um, community university, educational content grants, these sort of things are actually very valuable. So this is not financial advice, of course. And I don't know what the price of Camino is right now. I haven't sold any of my Camino, but uh, you may want to accumulate a little bit of Camino. Remember, the market cap is 43000 and the fully diluted valuation is 430 It would be cool if they've got some sort of transparency uh, docs. They're going to have like an allocation to angels and uh, key opinion leaders and stuff. So I don't expect them to say, like, we gave it to all these people or we, we did deals with all these people. Nothing like that. Just like, what are they doing with the core of the tokens? They still need to be, they're still a business. They still have secrets. And what do we have here? Some news on season one and season, or season two and season three. Info on both seasons will be released tomorrow. And the season two snapshot takes place at midnight UTC, July 31st. Uh, season two distribution and the season three structure will be all geared towards aligning the community to participate in governments and push Camino towards 10 billion. So there's probably a lot of aspects like once a meme coin reaches a, diff, uh, a kind of decent amount of size, 
maybe it can be added into lend and maybe you can use governance to try and increase the liquidation levels so it's not five percent zero percent ten percent something like that i think it'd be really cool if jlp if you could put jlp in there and maybe you can maybe i missed that and have take out a loan um based on it which we can but also have people borrow the jlp so they could take it and then can jump into another dap like this nx finance address trader finance would be others that are built those sort of things that would be cool now they also have as a reminder probably a final reminder on this for anyone that can do this uh go and do it they have on super team earn this 1000 PYUSD first prize 22 submissions the odds are in your favor next bit of news the send coin which as you know I'm not really following at all but I do want to put this on your radar the issue is we don't have any notice here this was released yesterday this video goes out today um the pre-order token the chapter 2 pre-order token can claim 510 tokens directly from the blinks from the blinks this will be open for only 24 hours which is just nasty like that's just not enough time to do anything. It's barely enough time to brush your teeth. Maybe maybe, maybe that's not a good example. Anyway, you click on this, you can connect your wallet, you click claim. I don't know how many people are gonna do this because of the fact that, and you get your $2.84. So just remember, if you miss out on it, it's not the end of the world. The unfortunate thing with Send is I'm through. I'm through with them. That's the last, probably the last time I'm going to cover them. They just don't offer enough value to the space in my opinion. Next bit of news, D-Bridge Finance. What, when, why, how? their DBR launch on the LFG. Here's the information. And they also have a town hall tomorrow in their Discord. Uh, well, it's hosted by Jupiter Exchange, so maybe in Jupe's Discord. August 2nd at 3 p.m. UTC for those that want to jump in. Now, all the information is just linked in this Jupe research document. And I haven't read through all of it yet. It's just a very new, new, new thing. However, basically this is the price per DBR is equal for all participants, fairness and equality for all eligible users. We need to go through it pretty decently. Long story short, if you've been using this, you're going to get some sort of allocation, of course. We don't know what that's going to be worth, but we'll work it out. And the other thing is the LFG vault's only selling 2% of the total supply, which is very, very low, which is a little bit of a surprise for me. So that's why I need to do quite a bit more of a, a look into this. I don't really think that's going to be super amazing but we'll have to check and it seems like uh season one snapshot there was almost there was 28,000 eligible addresses in total the final thing is it says somewhere in here but uh the tentative plan time is the end of august to do the launch also this is late breaking news are you ready for more PYUSD borrow capacity? Yes, yes I am. Make sure you turn on notifications with Camino and just put on notifications with my Twitter and also on YouTube. I'll put out posts when um, this actually goes live because the goal would be, in my opinion, go and borrow some PYUSD at less than 1%. If you want to go and swap it for USDC, you can go and swap it for USDC and go do whatever you want. If you can try and get some PYUSD, you're going to do very, very well in terms of just not paying this 20% of a borrow rate and the final news all supply all supply was the project which basically made solana unusable a few months ago they took it offline they've reworked some things it's coming back it's currently only on devnet if you want to get set up now follow this guide otherwise once it's on mainnet get amongst it essentially we may not break even but i think if 10 percent of the viewers of this youtube tried this out then i think you would learn a whole lot and maybe maybe this would do well Either way, I think it's worth learning some things that even if they don't have a clear plus EV signal. The actual price of ore, just so you know, I'm not getting any of that because you can see like it went low and then it went high and now it's down higher than it was, but still like it's a speculative asset and there's no mining at present. So this is just whatever's out there. This all will have to be swapped one for one when V2 launches. So your actionables. Send airdrop claim. It's only a couple of dollars. If you get it, great. If you don't, all good. I think, and we think, their research team thinks it ends at 4 p.m. UTC, but there's no exact time there. Join Solana's ecosystem call, 4 p.m. UTC. Deadline to claim. Claim your dupe ASR, August 6th. I'm going to include it every day until August 6th, but do it now. Don't leave it to the last minute. Check out Camino's super team earned bounty, 2K and prize money. And as normal, DCA soul on dupe and stake it with validator.com. And I have some bids set at like 150, not financial advice. Airdrop actionables. Check out the Cloud9 F Meteor LP on Camino and use a little bit of your personal judgment. If you want to be risk off, maybe remove, because I think people start to claim all of their uh, cloud now. And when they do that, maybe they just go and sell and the price goes down. We have a bit of impairment loss. I'm just staying in and I'm happy to stay in, but check that out and also go and claim your cloud. Sign up to Cube Exchange, complete your quests, 
Stake your bonk with bonkrewards.com. Check out Noon's VSOL guide and researcher keeps on putting it here. So I'll put it back onto your radar. Join the Discord for past soul. I'm not going to cover it much more and I'm probably going to take it off from tomorrow. But there's a snapshot 9th of August to use your past soul to go and mint their NFT. That's all for today. Catch you tomorrow. Oh.